For Bridgegate defendants, taking stand is a leap of faith. It's one of the riskiest decisions a defendant can make. Yet lawyers for two former allies of New Jersey Governor Chris Christie who are accused of conspiring to close access lanes to the George Washington Bridge in an act of political retribution have already vowed to jurors that their clients will testify. As the trial ends its fourth week and with the time drawing near for the pair to take the stand, were such promises a bold move, a bluff or an act of desperation? It's very rare and extremely dangerous for defendants to testify, said Dan Winner a former federal prosecutor in New York. Even if you have a narrative you want to get out through your clients and maybe humanize them and make them look like a sympathetic figure, Wenner said. When they get cross-examined, it could be devastating. Bridget Ann Kelly and Bill Baroni are accused of causing gridlock in Fort Lee by limiting local access to the bridge during five weekday mornings in September 2013 to punish the borough's Democratic mayor for refusing to endorse the Republican governor's re-election that year. Like all defendants, Kelly and Baroni have a constitutional right not to incriminate themselves. By taking the stand, they waive that protection for the duration of their testimony, including cross-examination. Jeffrey Lichtman, a New York defense attorney, said that lawyers usually decide whether their clients will take the stand months ahead of trial to give them time to prepare. Lichtman said that while each case is different, attorneys rarely begin a trial thinking that their client will testify only changing their mind if the proceedings are going poorly. If you are putting them on the stand, you feel like it's a Hail Mary pass, he said. Defendants usually testify to fill in holes in their defense that cannot be plugged by other witnesses. They may also take the stand in an attempt to humanize the person who has sat silently through weeks of testimony. Sometimes, in a case like this, you want to show the jury, see, these are honest people not looking to hurt anybody, Lichtman said. Baroni's lawyer may feel that his client has no choice but to testify since he has already taken the stand, obliquely, at trial. Baroni's voice and image have taken center stage several times as prosecutors played video for the jury of Baroni giving a combative performance before skeptical members of a state legislative committee that probed the lane closures. Baroni has sat mostly impassively through the testimony, apart from conferring with his legal team. Kelly has seemed more engaged taking notes, shaking her head when she disagreed with a witness, and wiping away a tear as one witness recounted how the press hounded Kelly's family after the scandal broke. The government's star witness in the case is David Wildstein, Baroni's former second-in-command at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the agency that owns and operates the bridge. Wildstein, who last year pleaded guilty to masterminding the conspiracy and is cooperating with prosecutors in hopes of a lenient sentence has been described as a villain and a liar, even by the prosecution's own witnesses. Lichtman said defense lawyers may want to show the contrast between their clients and Wildstein and then ask jurors, who do you believe? These kind, honest people that took the stand and testified? Or a guy like Wildstein who committed a crime, admitted it, and who is working it off solely to avoid jail time? Baroni's attorney, Michael Baldassari told jurors during his opening statement on September 19, I guarantee you 100%, I'm saying it here in open court, Bill is going to sit in that witness box and tell you what happened. The same day, Kelly's attorney, Michael Critchley, told the jury, Bridget will get on the stand and she will explain to you exactly what was going on.